I wanted to talk a little bit about this kind of secret advantage that Google has with the Google Pixel 6, the 6 Pro, and the upcoming Google Pixel 6a. Right now, we're going through a walk through some like kind of farming area right next to my house. It's right where they're building a bunch of brand new apartments. The oddness of Vietnam continues. Check this out. This whole area is kind of like farming and agriculture, right? Kind of an impromptu trash dump as well. And then, boom, new apartments. So it seems like every month or so, we hear of another company getting in trouble for thermal throttling their phones. Most recently it was Xiaomi, before that it was Samsung, before Samsung it was OnePlus, and I'm sure next month it might be Oppo or Motorola or some other big company. But they're all running into these issues because the newest generation of Snapdragon chipsets are super powerful. They turbo up over three gigahertz. And because of that, we're having problems with heat, heat management and battery efficiency with these ultra powerful chipsets. And manufacturers right now are trying to figure out how do they balance heat, battery consumption and performance. Now, in regards to this issue, we have some good news. And that's that the newest generation of Snapdragon chipsets, even the newest generation of MediaTek chipsets, have a ton of performance headroom. So even if they're being throttled, you don't have to worry about it that much because even if the chipset is 15% throttled, 20% throttled, it's still going to be as fast as the last generation chipset was minus throttling. Of course, that's if we take into account each generation, we get 10 to 15% better performance. We throttle the current chipset back 10 to 15%. We're at last generation's uh, peak performance threshold, but we're able to keep it cooler. So we can kind of keep this under control for long extended tasks short burst tasks, it's less of an issue. And that's on the positive side. But on the negative side, on the negative side is that in some ways we've kind of lost a generation of performance. If on average we're getting 10, maybe 15%, maybe in some cases 20% better performance generation after generation, when the Snapdragon 888 came out, we were seeing extended performance of Snapdragon 888 devices basically falling in line with what we had from Snapdragon 865 and 870 devices. Part of that people say is because of the move from TSMC to Qualcomm and foundries just being of lower quality, but it's undeniable that we kind of lost some ground going from the 865 or 870 to the 888 because the 888 had so many thermal throttling issues. That said, if manufacturers had chosen to clock or throttle those devices on launch, then we might have seen better extended performance and performance that is a notch ahead of what we had on 865 and 870 devices. And this is really where Google is pulling ahead of everyone else. See, because Google is using their own in-house SOC, or at least an SOC that's mostly of their design, although much of it may be based on Exynos, they don't have to sell their devices based on the device's benchmarks or synthetic scores. In fact, Google doesn't even need to really promote the like synthetic performance numbers of its devices at all. It just has to promote that its device is going to be 10% faster, 15% faster, 20% better AI, 10% faster photo processing, etc., for their devices to be a worthwhile upgrade to people. 
And if that sounds a lot like another fruity company that you like are familiar with, it's the same approach that they've taken. Real quick, one of the crazy things about all of these fields and all of this like farmland is that none of the people farming on this land kind of actually own it. Um, all of this land has been bought and is being developed by a big developer in the area. And these fields are just what's happening to this land temporarily while they build other parts of this whole thing. I don't know if the farmers here are renting and paying to use this land because they certainly make money off of this. I and my wife's family have family members that grow stuff here. Maybe they're getting it rent free. Go farmers. I just want to remind everyone that you can go ahead and become a channel member for a dollar a month. All of the videos for channel members are demonetized. So you have minimum ads, if any ads. And you also get other perks like awesome emojis, stuff like that, that you can go ahead and comment on my videos on. It's a dollar a month and I made it because I want people that hate ads to have a way of supporting my channel and what I do. So does any of this matter? Well, I think it matters a lot. I think specifically it matters a lot because this gives Google the option to go ahead and not play the horsepower game that other OEMs are playing. And you want a dirt bike to go off-road? It allows Google to not play this horsepower game that other manufacturers are playing. It also allows Google to possibly prioritize things like battery life or camera processing in their SOCs. It also allows Google to go ahead and try and tailor the Android experience for that SOC so that it gets better. And I can tell you, since I've owned the Google Pixel 6, this device went from being kind of ish buggy to much less buggy now to almost no bugs at all and i have really good performance for day-to-day -day stuff that i care about video quality is really really good photo quality is some of the best you can get on android right now and on top of that the price of this device is less than it is for other flagships and I think that's what makes the Pixel 6 a unique device and ultimately the device that I think I'm gonna keep on using.